truth can't wait. America now delivers it now. Subscribe before the next alert. Rare earth elements, 17 metallic elements, are the hidden force behind our modern technology, prized not for rarity, but for their unique magnetic and conductive properties. They're essential for everything from the vibrant colors on your smartphone to the powerful magnets in electric vehicles and wind turbines. These elements enable the miniaturization and efficiency of advanced devices, powering F-35 fighter jets, electric cars, and even the world's most advanced semiconductor chips. Without rare earths, many of today's technological breakthroughs would be impossible or unaffordable. Their applications are so deeply embedded in global industry that nearly every sector relies on them, often without realizing it. Yet, the supply chain for these critical materials is alarmingly concentrated in one country. This concentration has transformed rare earths from a technical necessity into a powerful geopolitical weapon. On November 27, 2025, China announced sweeping new export controls on rare earths and magnets, fundamentally rewriting the rules of global tech trade. For the first time, China is tying access to its rare earths to the end use and end user, giving it veto power over key global industries. Any foreign company using even trace amounts of Chinese rare earths must now seek a Chinese export license, extending Beijing's reach far beyond its borders. This move directly targets companies like ASML, whose advanced chip-making machines rely on rare earths for critical components. It's a calculated response to Western tech restrictions, signaling that China is ready to leverage its unique choke point in the global supply chain. The stage is set for a dangerous cycle of escalation that could fracture the global economy. China's dominance in rare earths is no accident. It's the result of decades of strategic investment, careful long-term planning, and a willingness to make tough choices that other countries have often shied away from. As early as the 1980s, Chinese leaders recognized the potential of rare earth elements and began pouring resources into developing the industry, building up not just mining capacity but also the expertise and infrastructure needed to process these minerals at scale. This rapid expansion came at a steep environmental cost. China accepted widespread pollution, toxic waste, and devastated landscapes, trade-offs that many other nations found unacceptable. By shouldering these burdens, China was able to undercut global competitors and establish itself as the world's rare earth powerhouse. Today China mines about 70% of the world's rare earths, but its real strength lies in refining, where it controls around 90% of the crucial processing capacity. This dominance isn't just about digging minerals out of the ground, it's about turning them into the high-purity materials that modern industries depend on. Even rare earths mined in countries like Australia or the United States are often shipped to China for processing because no other nation can match China's scale, technical know-how, or cost efficiency. This has made China the indispensable middleman in the global rare earth supply chain. China also produces over 93% of the world's high-performance rare earth magnets, critical components for everything from electric vehicles and wind turbines to smartphones and military hardware. By dominating this most valuable segment, China holds enormous leverage over industries worldwide. This vertical integration, controlling every step from mining to finished product, lets Beijing dictate prices, control supply, and use rare earths as a powerful bargaining chip. What began as a resource has become a strategic asset, tightly woven into China's broader economic and geopolitical ambitions. Past export restrictions, like the 2010 embargo on Japan, sent shockwaves through global industry, exposing just how dependent the world had become on Chinese supply. But today's new rules are even more targeted and sophisticated, allowing China to fine-tune its influence with precision. Now China can reward partners and punish rivals, all while maintaining a veneer of compliance with global trade norms. This unique position gives Beijing extraordinary power, not just over rare earths, but over the future of countless high-tech industries worldwide. China's new export control law introduces a mandatory licensing process for a wide range of rare earth materials and magnets. Exporters must disclose detailed information about end users and end uses, giving Chinese authorities deep insight into foreign supply chains. Sensitive sectors, like advanced semiconductors and military hardware, face intensive 
case-by-case -case reviews, allowing Beijing to delay or deny exports at will. Any military end use is automatically rejected, directly threatening Western defense contractors who rely on rare earths for critical systems. The law also bars Chinese nationals from supporting overseas rare earth projects, locking down decades of expertise. It's a comprehensive strategy to control not just resources, but technology and talent. The ripple effects of China's export controls are global, sending shockwaves through industries that rely on advanced technology and critical materials. From the heart of chip making to the far reaches of defense manufacturing, the consequences are profound and far-reaching. Under ASML, the Dutch company behind the world's most advanced lithography machines, is a linchpin in the global semiconductor supply chain. These machines are essential for producing the tiny, powerful chips that drive everything from smartphones to satellites. ASML's precision components depend on rare earth elements. Any disruption in their supply could bring the entire semiconductor industry to a standstill, halting innovation and production worldwide. Leading chip makers like TSMC, Samsung, and Intel are deeply reliant on ASML's technology. If these companies face delays or shortages, the impact would ripple through the digital economy, affecting everything from consumer electronics to cloud computing infrastructure and even the development of artificial intelligence. The defense sector is even more exposed. Modern military hardware, such as F-35 fighter jets, U.S. Navy submarines and advanced missile systems, all require components made with rare earths. These materials are not easily substituted, making defense production especially vulnerable. Rare earth magnets are crucial for guidance systems, propulsion, and targeting in Tomahawk missiles and other advanced weaponry. Without a steady supply, Western militaries could face critical shortages, undermining their technological edge. China's new law, which blocks exports of rare earths and other strategic materials to military end-users, puts Western defense production at immediate risk. This move is not just about economics, it's a strategic play that could reshape the balance of power. The U.S. Department of War has issued warnings that China is already outpacing the U.S. in weapons acquisition, leveraging its control over critical supply chains to gain a strategic advantage. By weaponizing rare earths, Beijing can slow or even halt its rival's military production without ever firing a shot. This form of economic statecraft is a powerful tool in modern geopolitics, allowing China to exert influence far beyond its borders. In this new era, trade policy has become a tool of asymmetric warfare, where access to resources and technology can determine the outcome of global power struggles. The West is racing to break its rare earth dependence, launching massive investments and new alliances. The EU's Critical Raw Materials Act sets ambitious targets for mining, processing and recycling, but faces environmental and political hurdles. The US and Australia are partnering to develop critical mineral resources, while Japan calls for a global coalition to counter supply chain risks. China, meanwhile, is building its own block of mineral-rich developing nations, seeking to lock in future supplies. The world is dividing into rival camps, each vying for control over the building blocks of the modern economy. For the West, the challenge is not just diversification, but building a secure, resilient supply chain from mine to magnet. The stakes are high, and the timeline is tight. The race for rare earth independence is on. The United States is now mounting its most aggressive and coordinated effort yet to rebuild its rare earth supply chain treating the issue as a matter of national security and economic survival. For decades the U.S. relied on global markets, but growing geopolitical tensions and supply disruptions have forced a dramatic rethink. Today, rare earths are seen as critical not just for advanced technology, but for the nation's defense and future prosperity. At the heart of this new strategy is the Mountain Pass Mine in California. Once nearly abandoned, it's now being revitalized with a $400 million government investment plus a $150 million loan to build on-site processing facilities. This is a major shift, aiming to bring the entire supply chain, from extraction to processing, back onto American soil. To ensure the project's long-term viability, the government is providing price floors and offtake agreements. These measures guarantee stable revenue for producers, insulating them from the volatility and manipulation that have long characterized the Chinese-dominated rare earth market. 
But America isn't going it alone. Strategic partnerships with Australia's Linus and South Korea's POSCO are helping to build a vertically integrated supply chain. By connecting non-Chinese raw materials to U.S. magnet production, these alliances are creating a resilient network that spans continents and reduces dependence on any single source. This marks a fundamental shift in U.S. industrial policy, prioritizing national security and supply chain resilience over the old model of pure market efficiency. The government is now actively shaping markets to protect strategic interests. By de-risking private investment and guaranteeing demand for strategic products, Washington is sending a clear signal. The era of laissez-faire is over when it comes to critical minerals. In an era of renewed great power competition, some supply chains are simply too important to leave to the invisible hand of the market. The stakes are high, and the consequences of inaction could be severe. America is betting big on rare earth independence, investing in technology, forging new alliances, and reshaping policy to secure its future in a rapidly changing world. For Beijing, the new export controls are a defensive move in a tech war it believes the U.S. started. By leveraging its rare earth dominance, China aims to slow U.S. technological and military progress and deter companies from decoupling. The policy serves as both shield and sword, punishing rivals while rewarding those who stay close to Beijing. But this strategy is risky overt coercion, motivates the world to diversify, making costly projects in the U.S. and Australia suddenly viable. By weaponizing its market power, China risks losing its long-term dominance for short-term leverage. Every use of this power strengthens competitors' resolve to become independent. Analysts warn that China could end up isolated as new supply chains emerge. It's a high-stakes gamble with global consequences. The rare earth battle signals the end of hyperglobalization and the rise of a new era of geopolitical competition. Economic interdependence is now seen as a vulnerability, not just a source of prosperity. We're witnessing the birth of parallel supply chains, one led by China, the other by the US and its allies. Multinational companies must navigate a fractured world, facing higher costs and slower innovation. For consumers, this means more expensive electronics and potential shortages of critical goods. The stability of the past is giving way to uncertainty and rivalry. What began as a tech dispute is now a contest for control over the materials that power the modern world. The coming years will redefine the relationship between technology, trade, and global power.